Hello, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll take a look at the Cooler Master MWE Bronze 650 Watt V2 Power Supply. This is something which may appeal to some of you out there that are looking for a budget build and not wanting to spend an absolute ton on a power supply, but still have something which is actually quite decent, and the actual build quality and the internals actually belie the price. Now, this one was actually a really good bargain, round right about Prime Day here in the UK. I actually managed to pick this one up for £33 on Amazon Prime. This was uh, yeah, an exceptionally good deal. I have noticed at the moment, as of the day's recording date, which is the 7th of August 2024, you can pick this up for around about £44 from box.co.uk. Amazon is a little bit more expensive at just under 50 but then you do get the benefits of Amazon Prime returns, and if it turns out it's not exactly what you want, at least you can return it very easily. Now, I will put some affiliated links in the video description, so if you want to maybe pick up one of these for your next budget build, you're more than welcome to do so. And we do generate a small income from any purchases made, so it all goes a little way to helping out the channel. But with all that said, let's take a look at this, do an unboxing, see what we actually get, talk about some of the specifications, and then you can work out whether or not it's going to be suitable for your next budget build. So first of all, taking a look at the packaging. So as you can tell, this is a Cooler Master product. It's got DC to DC design. It's also got a five year warranty, which is actually pretty decent for a bronze rated power supply. Generally a bronze rated power supply will come with either a one, two, maybe a three year warranty. So seeing a five year warranty is a pretty good step. And of course it's got the 80 plus bronze logo on there and it is up to 86% efficient. This specific version is the 230 volt model. There are other options available for European and US customers, although the part number will change, but the specs will be very similar. Although I have noticed on this particular UK version, the main capacitor on the power supply is uh, only an 85C unit, which isn't great, and is made by CapexCon. Whereas if you go for the European version, you will generally get elite capacitors and elite capacitors generally are better. They're not the best and they're not a Japanese kind of premium one, but for a budget brand, elite capacitors generally are kind of like the pick of the crop. The ones they've gone for in here obviously aren't bad. But they will get the job done and Cooler Master have put their money where the mouth is, offering that five year warranty. On the back of the box goes over some of the specifications, such as the single 12 volt rail, which actually will pump out up to 648 watts on that 12 volt rail, and the total capacity is 650, we're looking at about 120 watts on the minor rails. Also, it has a 120 mil hydraulic fluid bearing fan in there, which is actually quite a strong performer. This is made by Hongwan, I think you pronounce it, I'm not entirely sure, correct me in the comments section if I'm wrong. This fan is pretty decent. It is a little bit on the noisy side and it doesn't have any zero fan technology. So for those of you that want whisper quietness, then you might want to look elsewhere. In terms of built-in protections, this is actually not too bad at all. It has all the basic protections are present. So we've got over voltage protection, under voltage protection, over power protection, over temperature protection, and of course, short circuit protection. So let's take a look at what is actually included. So for UK, versions, you'll get a UK power plug with the three pin plug and the IEC on the other end. You also get four screws for attaching the power supply to your computer. There is uh, instruction guide and warranty information. And of course you get the power supply itself. And it's actually quite a nice looking unit. Something which I do like a lot is the grill section here. The grill section actually on a lot of power supplies is what makes a fan either loud or quiet. And having such an open one as this, is going to be useful for things like airflow and also for reducing turbulence against the fan blades. On the back, nicely ventilated and there is a nice rocker power switch. On the sides you've got two lots of badging depending which way you're going to mount this, giving you all the information there and taking a close up there you can see we've got 648 watts on that 12 volt rail, 120 watts on the minor rails. Next, let's take a look at the actual cables, and they've done the whole thing quite nicely in these really nice flat black cables, pretty decent quality. So we'll start off with the main ATX power connector. So this is a solid 24 pin, so you don't have that extra fiddly four pin on the end, which sometimes comes loose when building. So this one comes in at 500 millimeters in length, so that is about 20 inches. Next one is going to be the CPU connection or EPS as it's otherwise known. So on this one, you've got a solid eight pin and also you've got a four plus four. So depending on what motherboard you're using, you should have your bases covered. It is on a pigtail, which in most instances was probably not a great idea. So you're looking around about sort of 230 to 250 watts, the maximum you're really going to want to get through this particular cable. 
One of the pros of this is the fact that because this power supply is a captive one, so it's not a modular power supply or even semi-modular, all the wires are directly soldered to the board. That sometimes can be a weakness in some power supplies when you have pigtails because the solder points on modular connectors are smaller, so they don't allow much throughput, whereas this being directly soldered to the board will alleviate that somewhat. But ideally, I would have liked to have seen two separate cables, but this is only a 650 watt power supply, so I think this is gonna be absolutely fine. Just don't rely on the extra pigtail connector too much. Again, 650 watt budget power supply is unlikely you will, but you can use it should you need to. For those of you wondering, the EPS cable comes in at 550 millimeters in length, plus an additional 150 between the two connectors. So that's roughly 22 inches plus an additional six. Next, I'm gonna be looking at the PCI Express cables, which I think they've actually gone a little bit overboard on this, depending on how you look at it. So you've got two individual cables, both of which have a six plus two and also a pigtail as well. So potentially up to four connectors on here, which realistically you're never gonna use on this kind of wattage power supply. But if you're using a dual eight pin and you wanna run two cables and not use the pigtails, that's definitely possible. These again, similar sort of length, so 550 millimeters plus an additional 150 between the connectors. So that's again, 22 inches plus six. Next, we've got some SATA connections. So there's actually six SATA connections on here. So each one of the cables has three units on there. And these are 440 mil from the first connector to the power supply. Then you've got an additional 150 between the SATA plugs as we had previously. So that's 17 inches plus six plus six. And last of all, we've got the accessory connector, otherwise known as a Molex plug. I know a lot of you don't like me saying that, but that's what most people know it as. So this one, three connections on here of a single cable, and this one is 400 millimeters from the first plug to the power supply, plus an additional 150 between the plugs. That's again, 16 inches plus six plus six. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of this and also kind of where it fits into the market. So depending on what you're looking for power supply wise, this fits in just above, I would say, some of the Game Max Rampage units, which have always been tried and tested, like using those a lot, and also a similar noise profile. Also very similar to something like the Corsair CX650 in terms of the overall performance and potentially sometimes even the pricing. Although I think with this you get an extra two years warranty, whereas the CX range I think is three years, but I could be wrong on that. I've not owned one in a little while. Other things to be wary of is the fan noise of this. So I've tried to actually replicate or get a basic reading of the fan noise. Unfortunately, my decibel meter doesn't seem to be doing a particularly good job and we are in a very unrestricted room so there's noises that change quite frequently the normal noise floor of this room is somewhere around about 35 to maybe 45 decibels and this comes in at a couple of decibels over that again i've got some footage so i'll let you see that now So the fan itself, good quality unit and high amperage on it as well, so it is going to be very strong. And the power supply itself is designed to keep itself around about 40 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much the ideal characteristics for a power supply. So you might find it a little bit on the noisy side. Would have been really nice to have this with a zero fan technology. Unfortunately, due to the size of the heat sinks here being a little bit on the small side, it does require the fan to be running all the time. Although potentially for you, it may not be intrusive or Perhaps you're doing it for a build, maybe some sort of server type thing, which is just going to be locked away in a cupboard somewhere, so you're never going to care about it. So for that purpose, it's going to be absolutely great. So overall, I think that is pretty much it. It's pretty much what you'd expect from a relatively inexpensive power supply. If you're paying somewhere around about 35 to 40 pounds for this, I think you're getting an absolute bargain. There's not really anything else on the market at the moment which comes close to this. In terms of the internal design, with the DC to DC power design, which is got a rarity of this kind of range. They've kind of gone a little bit overboard on this in terms of what is actually in there for a bronze rated power supply. Normally you would see the kind of technology inside here in a gold rated one. So maybe this is similar to with processors where they have binning and these ones just can't quite cut the mustard or they wanted to reduce cost on parts. So they've just lowered it down to a bronze rated model. Either way, I think you're getting a good deal. Obviously do bear in mind the pricing if you're paying over 40 to 45 pounds, then I think there's other options on the market. But if you can pick up a bargain or it's on sale, I think this one is definitely worth a look. But that's what I think about it, but that isn't really important. What I want here is what you think about it in the comment section below, which I'm sure you will do. So please sound off in the comments and uh, let me know what you think.
So I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.